Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. Quick warning before we begin, in today's first story there is mention of abuse and grooming, so if those are topics that make you uncomfortable, you might want to skip the story. Now let's get started. This post is from the subreddit Relationships and it's by user usually do this. I'm 18 female, having trouble with my boyfriend, 19 male, and my therapist, 50 female. I don't know who to trust. I've had trouble with mental illness for most of my life, drawn from emotional and psychological abuse. I didn't start dealing with those issues until I started going to therapy at 18. My parents wouldn't let me get a therapist until I had an incident happen at college. Now, I've been dating my boyfriend for a few months, although we've been best friends for about a year. I really love him and I tell him everything. We are extremely close to each other and talk more frequently than a normal couple should even though we're long distance. This also means that we do have more issues than some people do, especially because of my mental illness issues. We've seen the best and worst of each other, but I want to emphasize that I do love my boyfriend a lot and I think he's incredibly supportive given how much of a mess I can be. Now, the reason I started going to therapy in the first place, besides the incident I mentioned, was that my boyfriend was getting emotionally exhausted dealing with my issues. I can be extremely overwhelming and I know this, I understand it can't be easy and I didn't want to burden him and I thought that having an extra support system would help. Somehow I found a therapist within walking distance of my school, no car, who accepted our insurance. She is a nice lady and she's been sort of helpful, although I don't have much experience with therapy so there's not much to compare it to. However, I feel that she's way too quick to make certain assumptions about diagnosis. For example, I initially came for an intake assessment and told her that I was relating heavily to symptoms of BPD. This was within 5 minutes of meeting me and she said, You don't have BPD. People with BPD are extremely annoying. She then continues talking about how she's been in the field for X number of years and lists her credentials and goes on and on about her professional experience and finishes with, I know a BPD when I see one. What made you pick BPD anyway? That's so random and there are tons of personality disorders that you could have fixated on. I told her how I have issues with abandonment due to abuse and she was like, oh come on, you don't have BPD. Although if you really want it that badly, I can help you fake it. I think she meant for that to be a joke but I didn't take it that way and I was honestly extremely offended. Even if I don't have BPD, I know some people with it and I know how much they struggle. Writing them off as annoying and insulting them for their experiences seems cruel. My parents had a tendency to invalidate me growing up, to the point of not letting me go to therapy even when I implied that I needed it badly, and my therapist's words reminded me of my mother. Even if I wasn't severe enough for a diagnosis, I feel that saying that I related to the criteria was severe enough to warrant working through the issues instead of dismissing them. Still, I was encouraged to go back to her because it was just one comment and she's human and makes mistakes too. My boyfriend encouraged me even though he agrees that I do have some behaviors that match up with BPD behaviors. Then, a few weeks later, my boyfriend and I had a particularly bad fight where he got 100% exhausted after I pushed him too hard emotionally. I was being out of line and I apologized and made amends for it because even if my mental illness causes me to act manipulatively, I take full responsibility for what I did. Anyway, he told me that I caused 70% of the problems in our relationship and he would say 90 but he wanted to be generous with me. He also said that without me in his life, he would have no problems. This was hurtful, although it had truth to it. He later apologized for this comment and admitted that looking back, he had issues with insecurity that caused issues in the relationship as well and took responsibility for it. I then suggested that he might want to look into therapy as well if he thought that would help and he got very defensive and said that he was perfectly capable of handling his issues on his own. The next day I had an appointment and I told my therapist about the fight. She immediately said, he definitely has narcissistic personality disorder. He is so manipulative and completely invalidated you. He erodes your self-worth and he's the sick one. I tried to argue that it's extremely difficult for a 19-year-old guy to deal with a girlfriend who has largely untreated mental health issues and that he's extremely supportive the rest of the time. It would be unreasonable to expect him to be perfectly emotionally supportive 24-7 given how much time we spend talking to each other. 
However, she was not having this and encouraged me to keep my radar up because I was in danger of ending up in another abusive relationship. She said that I might want to think about ending things with him. Now, I feel uncomfortable that she thinks it's right to diagnose people without even meeting them. She diagnosed my mom with narcissistic personality disorder as well, although I think she could be correct about this sometimes. Of course, I'm young and I have no psychology training, so maybe I should trust her professional opinion more than mine. However, I have a bad feeling about her. I told my boyfriend about my therapist's concerns, and he felt extremely guilty that he had hurt me so badly, to the point where he was eroding my self-worth. I tried to reassure him that it was totally understandable for him to lose his cool sometimes, and that I was much better with him than without him. Since this happened, our relationship has been better than ever. However, I'm seriously confused right now because I don't know whether or not my therapist is right or wrong. I have a serious issue with detecting manipulation or toxic relationships. So her immediate extremism does not help me at all in improving my radar. I keep leaving her office more and more confused. I've asked my parents and friends, people who have met him and talked to him and know more about our relationship, about him, and everyone thinks he's a really great guy. Although he has his questionable moments, overall he's the best boyfriend I've ever had and deals with my issues so consistently and patiently. Still, I've been called naive and too trusting in general, so maybe my therapist is just seeing all the red flags that I am missing. How do I determine who is right or wrong here when I'm bad at figuring out who is manipulating me? What are some warning signs to watch out for? How do I decide who to trust? I don't want to end up in yet another abusive relationship because being the victim is a horribly isolating feeling. Well OP, even though I'm also not a mental health professional just like you, I'm getting also a really weird vibe from your therapist. Like you say, diagnosing somebody without even talking to them or knowing them for a professional? That sounds very unprofessional. Now, in my personal experience, having gone to therapists and different therapists and psychologists that never in the first five minutes said what I have or what I don't have. That usually takes more than five minutes and after a few tests and some questions and some analysis, they should come to a conclusion. So yeah, all that to say that just like you, I don't trust your therapist. Now regarding your boyfriend, I acknowledge that what he said was incredibly hurtful and insensitive. But I do believe you're doing the right thing by putting it in the correct context because of course you had an influence in his behavior and the fact that he apologized right away and the fact that he feels bad for eroding your self-worth, yeah, that's definitely narcissistic behavior, right? Now to your question about determining who to trust or who is right or wrong, I would take the scientific approach. You need more data points which translates into a second or third opinion. Now honestly, I would have done this as soon as my therapist rubbed me the wrong way because you need to establish a trust relationship with your therapist. If she gives you a bad vibe, that's enough to say no thanks, I'll look for another one. And what do you guys think about this situation? What would you do if you were in OP shoes? Let me know in the comment section and now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. Empty Whiteboard says, There is a reasonable and simple, but not necessarily easily done method of figuring this out. Go to a new therapist. If multiple ones are telling you the same thing, then maybe you are right. I think she's trying to get on your side by diagnosing the people around you with issues. But what do I know? And Opie responds, yeah, she does have a tendency to frame me as right in every situation, which I know isn't really true. There's probably a reason for this, but I think it would be good to find a new therapist. It'll be difficult to find one who is close enough and accepts my insurance. I found her after calling at least 15 different people and she was the only option at that point that would make me feel secure. I have to note, she's a marriage and family therapist. Sedonis says, if you can't trust this therapy, you can get a new one. You have that right. Some therapists suck, some are great, some just don't mesh personalities with you. You are trusting this person with your mental health, your emotions, and your life. You should find a therapist that you trust. You should find a therapist that listens to you. You should find a therapist that doesn't belittle you and your concerns. You don't need to tell her why you don't want to see her anymore. You can just find a new one and cancel your next appointment with this one, if you have one scheduled. And you can keep doing that until you find one you trust. And Opie responds, this is a really good point. I am trusting her with much more than I realized. I'm nervous about leaving with no explanation because I have trouble leaving people in general. I'm worried about her feeling offended or like she's a bad therapist. 
Luckily, I don't have an appointment for this week since I'm out of town and I haven't scheduled any future appointments yet. The Coleman Collection says, I had all the information I needed after her BPD comment. Find a new therapist. Anyone who works in the mental health field knows that BPD patients can certainly be frustrating at times to work with, but no professional should ever write off a whole group as annoying and say that to a client. I cannot even wrap my head around that. It's like she's trying to gossip with you or something. Furthermore, you can't rule out a diagnosis in five minutes when it's not even your scope of practice. I've worked with many individuals who were very psychotic but good at hiding it to know not to write off anything after a short interaction. Lastly, she definitely shouldn't diagnose someone else they don't know. So wrong. And Opie responds, yes, I was shocked as well. I already knew that people with BPD can be considered difficult to deal with, but I thought it wasn't appropriate to complain about it to me. She definitely does seem gossipy at times, even outside of this incident. Additional information from Opie's comments. I never diagnosed myself or said that I thought I had it. I was just telling her that I was worried that I related to it by referencing the criteria and giving her examples of where this was happening in my life. I understand it may seem like I'm faking, but I'm not faking anything, although I do admit I can be attention seeking at times. Even then, it would be good for me to get help with my need for validation and attention, rather than just writing it off. Now I'm starting to think that yes, it was an invalidating thing what my boyfriend did. That hasn't happened before to such a degree, so that incident kind of shocked me. He can be very insecure and will sometimes try to talk himself up which in turn can involve talking down to me because I easily go along with it. However, since I discussed this with him a few weeks ago, he's made an active effort to avoid doing this. He is even more supportive than ever and is more willing to admit his past mistakes. Lately, I've been trying to be more positive. My boyfriend has been helping me with this by pointing out or complimenting me on specific good things. I do feel like my therapist is pushing me towards the positive in myself, which is good. At the same time though, I don't exactly want to do it at the expense of those around me. She seems to push me toward feeling negatively toward my parents and my boyfriend, leaving only my roommate as the only positive person in my life. And even if that's true, it feels extreme for her to say things like, your mom has no right to call herself a mother. She may be right, but when I ask her to be more gentle about it, she just says, hear it. What? Her points are valid, but it's not worth feeling this uneasy about her. I'll make sure to keep my guard up about my boyfriend though. Right now, we're working on getting better, but I'll try to be extra cautious if it starts slipping back into invalidation. All right, well, the community agrees that OP needs to find a new therapist, OP agrees with them, and she's also keeping an eye out for things going on in her relationship. So now it's time that we move on to the update to see how this story ends. But of course, before that, you know that here's another one of my playlists for you to enjoy after this video. Now let's move on with that update. Hi Reddit, thank you so much for your advice. It was really helpful and it was the push I needed to finally switch therapists. This one is about 35 minutes away if I walk. However, I told my parents and they were willing to pay for me to Uber there. It's also scheduled, so I'm able to walk to class right after, which only takes 20 minutes. So not terribly inconvenient and she takes my insurance. She is so much better, like unbelievably so. I felt more capable after two sessions, I've done four sessions now, with her than eight sessions with my other therapist. I'm fine with experiencing pain during my sessions and while working out my issues, but my old therapist had me looking at everyone as an antagonist, diagnosed the people around me without meeting them, and told me that I wasn't a whole person. My new therapist talks to me at an intellectual level that I enjoy and can benefit from. She recommends doable activities and exercises outside of therapy, including books to read, all of which I've loved and can benefit from. She checks in to make sure she's interpreting situations correctly. She points out positive qualities in my personality that I'm blind to and overall makes me feel like I don't have to live my life constantly afraid of myself and the people around me. Within the first two sessions, I gave her my backstory but never mentioned BPD. However, she mentioned it to me and agreed when I said I felt like I had borderline traits. She often brings up my fears of abandonment, helps me analyze them, and I've talked with her quite a bit about my relationship with my boyfriend. She helps me look at past arguments and current ones if they come up, and analyze how to approach the situation with love and wisdom, as she likes to say. 
It's helped me de-escalate situations and my boyfriend agrees that it's easier now to stay away from feeling angry and resentful of me since I'm more open to empathizing instead of just immediately breaking down. She has never told me that anyone in my life was manipulative or I should cut them out. She lets me take those conclusions for myself if I need to. I'll probably never be cured fully and that's okay, at least I know I'm safe now while I try to heal. I was so sick of going to my old therapist and wondering who the scapegoat was going to be this time, who I was going to have to cut out of my life or who I would now view as a dangerous enemy. I wasn't looking for someone to reaffirm my status as a victim who had to dodge others abusive behaviors constantly. I was looking for someone to help me take control of myself and my side of the situation so that my perceptions and reactions to things were closer to what was happening in reality. Once I can look at things more objectively instead of through a negative or dramatic lens, then I can figure out if the way that people treat me is truly manipulative or just me being overly paranoid or framing myself as a victim, or, most realistically, a combination of both sides of the story. I truly feel like with her support and the support of my loved ones, I'll be able to comb through the context of my past, listen to myself and navigate my thoughts in the present moment and eventually build a better future for myself where I can appropriately respond to life situations, thrive in the ways I should be thriving and stop being my own most destructive enemy. And yes, I share all of this with my boyfriend. I tell him what I talked about each session and we discuss it. He's happy about the conclusions I come to with her and he feels that she really gets me. Of course, our conversations don't always work out and sometimes we'll still resort to blaming behaviors. But overall, we've had more empathy-filled discussions. I didn't realize how much easier conflict was if you just take care to acknowledge the other person's feelings particularly if they're feeling slighted in some way, instead of just freaking out about things. So true. However, I know all of this can be draining to him, so I did suggest therapy for himself if he ever feels too overwhelmed. He hasn't felt the need to do that yet and hopefully it doesn't have to get that bad, but I do want him to get help if need be because the last thing I want to do is psychologically damage or fatigue him. For me, I've felt really invalidated and ignored throughout my life. Having an hour per week where someone wants to focus on helping me improve and grow is invaluable. Finally, today I went to a Take Back the Night event and told my story, grooming. Telling a room full of people about what I went through and having them support me and understand me made me feel so empowered and like I wasn't alone. I'm so happy that I got to do this and that I'm getting help now for my issues. And regarding my old therapist, I don't have any ill will toward her. I just think that there is a very specific type of person that could benefit from her style of therapy. Huh? And I wasn't one of those people. Thank you, Reddit. I feel hopeful that my life will change for the better. Well, OP, I'm gonna call this a happy update in the making. Why? Well, because you're apparently doing better and it sounds like you're happy and you're working through your issues. But on top of that, your relationship is now also better. So it's all positive things for you. Congratulations, OP. The only thing I don't agree with you is on your old therapist. I don't think anybody would benefit from her style of therapy. In any case, OP, here's wishing you all the best in the future. It sounds like you're on the right track, so that's great. Take care, OP, and thank you for sharing. And even though the mood is great right now, we can still boost it. So let's finish this video with a mood booster post. This post is from the subreddit Malicious Compliance, and it's by user Ferdo. Yes, please punish me by making it harder for you to bother me. The owner of a small company issued me a company cell phone that I didn't need and felt that gave him an excuse to call me any time of day or night, work day or not, with stupid questions. He also kept giving us, those of us with company cell phones, changing rules about using those phones. One rule was that we had to answer as soon as possible. Another rule was we were not to talk on the phone while driving. We had to pull over and park, then answer and talk. So, one morning I'm driving to work and should get to the office about 15 minutes early when he rings my phone. Morning traffic is heavy near the office and it takes me some time to get out of traffic and park in a parking lot before I answer. He keeps it ringing the whole time. When I finally answer, he asks, where are you? I tell him that I was about 15 minutes from the office, but I had to stop to answer his call. He asks, why aren't you here yet? I tell him again that I probably would have been at the office by now, but his call and rules have me sitting in a parking lot instead. 
So I ask, what is the hurry? Is there an emergency? If I weren't interrupted, I would have been in the office early. He responds with, why aren't you coming? I remind him of his rule that I am not to answer his phone and drive at the same time. This type of stupid banter continues for a while until he gets tired. So he hangs up and I continue to the office. Now about 15 minutes late. When I get to the office, the owner meets me and demands that I give him the phone back. Says I don't deserve it. Hooray! Now he is unable to keep calling and bothering me. About a week later, the owner stops at my cube and asks why I'm not answering his cell phone calls. I remind him that he had confiscated that phone. Apparently, he shoved it into a drawer and he cannot hear it ring. Yeah, I moved on to greener pastures not long after this. Good for you OP on getting rid of that company cell phone. I personally hated my company cell phone. I always rejected having one until I couldn't anymore because of the 2010 earthquake that happened in Chile. After that, it was a matter of safety so I couldn't say no anymore. So good for you OP and thank you for sharing. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch it. Now, if you've gotten to this point in the video, I assume that you like these stories that I'm reading out. So here are a couple more that you might enjoy. And if you don't have any time to watch another story right now, save it for later. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.